Oh my gosh. Hey everybody. Thanks for visiting September 2023. I'm Michelle at Big Valley Living and I want to thank Leanne at Mennonite Farmhouse for inviting me to do a second video this month. This is my favorite recipe, roasted tomato soup. Uh, amazing. And you can actually, it's a, it's a Williams Sonoma slash Vitamix recipe. First recipe I ever made in my Vitamix. Let's give a few details about soup timber, shall we? There are 30 days of fabulous soup recipes. Leanne has decided that she's going to be giving away a $100 Amazon gift card as a grand prize. And then there are two more prizes and each one of those will be a $50 gift card. How are you going to win this? Well, you're going to go to each one of the channels. I would subscribe to them, quite frankly. They're excellent channels. And then leave a heartfelt comment after watching their video. Give them a thumbs up too, because that's going to help everybody. Now, on October 7th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 3 p.m. Pacific Time, you will want to make sure to tune in to Mennonite Farmhouse where Leanne is going to be giving away some fabulous prizes. How do you get into that drawing? You need to leave a comment for each one of the videos to increase your chances of your comment being picked in a random comment picker. And if your comment is picked, and it could be any one of those videos, then you will win one of the prizes. So my suggestion is to Spend a little nice cozy time watching all these great recipes and make sure to make a comment on each one. We do not have tomatoes right now in our garden, but I got these beautiful tomatoes at the farmer's market. They're all locally grown. And what are we going to do with these? Well, kid, let me tell you. We're going to make a nice roasted tomato soup. This is my hands down favorite soup in the whole wide world. And when I told my sister-in-law that I was going to be making this soup on a video, she raised her hand and said, I'm here to help. So I'm making lunch for her and I for a couple of days at work. I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees. So what I want to do is start by showing you the mixture that I put over my tomatoes to roast to make this decadent roasted tomato soup. Come on along. Let's go make it. Alrighty, this recipe marinade is very, very simple and it's just going to go over the top of the tomatoes as they roast. We're also going to put the juice right on into the soup as we make it, okay? We're going to start with three tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of dried thyme, I always use dried, it works out really well. And we'll add two tablespoons of fresh pressed garlic. Roughly a half a teaspoon of salt. That's a sea salt right there. And some freshly ground black pepper. And that's going to be about a, probably a quarter teaspoon. You don't need too much. It's just to bring out the flavor. And I'm going to get a baby whisk out. I'll put the recipe to the original down below, but I've made this so many times. I just, I measure with my heart, guys. I measure with my heart, but I am loosely following the recipe. I have separated out the tomatoes that I actually want to use in my roasted tomato soup. And there are th two really large heirloom tomatoes. And then these are just some like plum tomatoes, but they were, they really look nice. So I think they'll make it good. All I need to do is fill one cookie sheet with tomatoes that have been cut in half. So let's go wash them up. I want to show you that these are the scars. These are just, you know, little cracks, hairline cracks from when it was growing. I'm not going to get rid of those because these aren't slicers and they're not meant to be pretty. They're just going to be put into a high speed blender. So let's leave it in there. Okay. As long as you don't have any really bad you know, you don't want any bugs or anything like that. You don't want to open cracks where there could be germs, but this is just part of the growing of an heirloom tomato. And I just always leave it in. All clean. Did you know 
But if you take some parchment paper and crumple it up, it'll lay flatter on your cookie sheet or in your pan. I got my trusty tomato knife out. So we're going to slice these down the equator of the mater. You like that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I crack myself up. I really do. Okay. You're welcome to borrow that, especially if you're teaching your kiddos how to cook. And then I'm just going to lay them onto the parchment. Get that out of the way. And what we want to do is fill this parchment. Here comes the star of the show again. So what I'm going to do now is you could spoon this on. I'm going to slice an onion. I have approximately uh, one, one to two tablespoons of olive oil in here. If you are whole food plant-based and you don't use oil, no worries. You can absolutely just cook these with water and just keep adding water as you need to as the onions cook down. I wonder how many people know that you really don't need oil to saute. And the flavor is just as good. So if you're cutting down on oil or anything like that, or you ran out and you don't want to go up to the store just for some oil, know that you can use water, keep an eye on it, and get just as good of a, if not better, of a result. When it gets a little bit translucent, I'm probably going to add about maybe a half a cup of a, of a white wine. It imparts a really nice deep flavor when you put wine in there. The wine cooks off. If you choose not to put wine in it, it's not the end of the world. I just like the depth of flavor. I had to show you these onions. Uh, don't they look great? Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. So we have our nice caramelized onions. I think the easiest way to put our tomatoes in, we're going to fold up our parchment paper and very quickly go in and dump this. Because that will get all the juice in there. You have just a little bit more left on this sheet pan. Cookie sheet. Hey, in the comments, do me a favor. Tell us what you call them. Do you call it sheet pan or cookie sheets? Oh, you guys, it's ooey gooey delicious. There is a recipe similar to this in the Ball Blue Book of canning, and I am going to try making it, but this is not an approved canning recipe. This is something you're going to eat for lunch. If you have any leftover, then you're going to go ahead and just freeze it or throw it into the refrigerator for a couple of days. So, there's quite a bit of liquid in the bottom. We use a Vitamix. Oh, that's not blood. That's... <laughs> oh, goodness. Our model of Vitamix actually has a soup setting. The friction's going to do all the work for us. You could have absolutely taken the tomatoes, put them into the refrigerator overnight, which gives them an even deeper flavor, and then done your onion mixture, uh, you know, the day of. But I want to show you what a Vitamix does or any high-speed blender when you do the soup setting. Watch this. Watch the steam. I'm going to add a little bit of water, and then we're going to go ahead and put it into our bowls because that, it's thick. But I want you to see how there's no cream in this soup, but doesn't it look creamy and delicious? So I know that, you know, water's going to obviously evaporate as, as the soup cools. So I'm putting about a cup of water in here, and I'm going to go ahead and run it for about like a minute just to incorporate everything. And there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and just pour myself a tiny bowl. And for a little bit of pretty color, let's put some fresh thyme on there. That is so good. 
Thanks again, Leanne. I really, really have had a lot of fun watching videos, gathering new recipes, meeting new channels, and just having a lot of fun in this collaboration.